Eating liver has become super popular recently, not just with the rise and fall of Liver King. You also have more and more people following primal and paleo diets, which make liver out to be a superfood. In this video, I want to give you a reality check when it comes to liver. We will talk about its actual nutrients. I will explain why it can be healthy in some cases. And I will also talk about why it can be very detrimental to your health in other cases. Let's get started. Okay, so if you look online, a lot of people call liver a superfood. I personally believe that the label is being used inflationary right now for all kinds of foods, but maybe they're right in the case of liver. So let's look at the actual nutrients of 100 grams of beef liver. So in terms of macronutrients, 100 grams of beef liver, which is around three and a half ounces, have 135 calories. This is about the same as 100 grams of beef steak. It also has quite a lot of protein at around 20 grams and just a little fat and a little carbs. So we can call it a high protein, low fat, low carb food. Now this would be ideal for fitness purposes where you want to lose fat or gain muscle, but that's not what we're interested in because there are many good protein foods out there. Instead, we are interested in the mineral and vitamin density of liver because that's what actually affects your health. So onto the vitamin content of liver. Here you can see all the important vitamins listed along with the percentage of RDI, so you recommend a daily intake. I highlighted those vitamins in red where 100 grams of beef liver gets you more than 100% of your RDI. In our case, this would be vitamin A, vitamin B2, and vitamin B12. What that means is that liver is an especially good source of the fat-soluble vitamin A and also a decent source of the B vitamins, especially B2 and B12. Of course, it also has other vitamins, but not to the same extent. All in all, I would call beef liver a fairly vitamin-dense food, so it's pretty good when it comes to vitamins. Next, the mineral content. As you can see, liver also has a wide spectrum of minerals but most importantly, it has a lot of copper. The RDI for copper in the US is 900 micrograms for men and women daily. So this is over 10 times the RDI. If we look at liver in terms of minerals, we can say that it is an okay source for most minerals, but it's a great source for copper, which it is very high in. Now that we looked at the nutrients and now that you actually know what liver contains, why would anyone say that it's not good for you? I mean, it's full of vitamins and minerals, right? Unfortunately, there are a couple of problems with liver. The first is contamination. As you probably know, liver is the main detoxifying organ of the body. What that means is that it's not just an important storage for nutrients, but also the gateway that most toxins pass through when they're eliminated from your body. Usually, when your body wants to get rid of a toxin, and this could be heavy metals or pesticides, for example, they will either be excreted through the kidneys, where you pee them out, or they will be excreted through the liver, where you poop them out because they get excreted through your bile. Unfortunately, this process is not 100% bulletproof, so there will always be some toxin residue that stays in your body, and it accumulates over time. What usually happens is to not let these toxins float around your blood, your liver keeps them and holds on to them. So when you eat liver, you consume these toxins. The more contaminated the environment that the cow lived in and the more toxin exposure it had, the more contaminated its liver will be. So that's problem number one, the chronic toxin exposure that you get from eating liver every day. The next problem is something even fewer people are aware of, nutrient excess. We usually speak of nutrient deficiencies, but you can have too much of a good thing. Some nutrients accumulate in your body over time, so if you get too much of them, they can reach toxic levels. In terms of liver, the nutrient that is most often talked about is vitamin A toxicity. Now, I personally believe that vitamin A toxicity is overblown, at least when you get it from natural foods. Now, even though vitamin A is fat soluble, so it can accumulate in your tissue, usually the birth defects that have been linked to vitamin A toxicity come from vitamin A supplements, so synthetic vitamin A. Also, we know of certain Inuit tribes that live months on seal meat and a diet very high in vitamin A, 
without problems. That's why I personally don't think that vitamin A is the main problem when it comes to nutrient excess when we talk about liver. You also won't run into problems with the B vitamins that I talked about that are very high because B vitamins are generally water soluble. So you just pee them out. But there is another nutrient that rarely gets talked about that can also accumulate in your tissue. We already looked at it before. It's copper. Now, copper toxicity is a controversial topic. It refers to having too much copper in your body, especially in your own liver, your muscles, and your brain. And it also often comes with a deficiency in the blood, which makes it very difficult to spot because regular blood tests can actually show a copper deficiency instead of an overload. Because copper is a very potent oxidant, it can create a lot of oxidative stress and inflammation in the tissue, which in the long term can lead to all kinds of problems, depending on which organ the copper is attacking. In your brain, it can lead to neurotransmitter imbalances. When it builds up in the liver, it can impact overall liver function, which means you will be even less likely to eliminate the extra copper that you have. And in the muscles, it can lead to muscle twitches and chronically tense muscles. Now, copper toxicity is not a medical diagnosis, at least not yet, but it does work very well in practice. Treating it is very effective in curing people of their chronic fatigue, their hormonal problems, and their anxiety. I'm the best example of this, and it completely changed my life. If you don't know about the potential side effects of copper, and you might even be at risk of copper toxicity, and then you start eating liver every day, you basically make the problem worse. You will unknowingly be increasing your copper load and might not even notice it in the short term, because copper is a very stimulating mineral. That means it gives you energy in the short term. But in the long term, you will crash, because at some point, your body will no longer be able to handle this high copper load and the oxidative stress that comes with it. That's what happened to me. I had a constant craving of copper high foods. For me, it wasn't liver, but it was chocolate. And I always felt better for a few days. Unknowingly, I was increasing my copper load over years and years. And at some point, my body completely crashed and I had the worst fatigue and headache. Now, I won't go into more detail with copper toxicity and how to fix it, because that's a topic for another video. I just wanted you to know about it because it is definitely a risk factor when you eat liver every day. I do want to talk about one more argument though that I hear a lot from people when I tell them about the possible dangers of eating liver every day. It's that they say, but our ancestors did it, so it has to be fine. The problem with this argument is that our ancestors nutrient intake and environment was completely different from ours. Just as an example, it is estimated that our primal ancestors consumed around 50 milligrams of zinc every day. This is compared to the 11 milligrams that are recommended today. Also, our ancestors lived in an environment that was a lot freer from toxins and pollutants than we have right now. The livers they were consuming came from free roaming animals that were eating their natural diet. This is nothing compared to the industrialized meat production that we see today. Now, please don't think that I'm trying to convince you to not eat liver at all. I just wanted to talk about the potential dangers of it and show you how to navigate them properly. To wrap up this video and give you my recommendations if you want to consume liver regularly, please follow these two tips. First, try to get the cleanest liver that you can find. In some cases, this means buying organic and in others, it means buying from a local farmer that lives near to you. It really depends on what you have access to. And two, know your own nutritional status. So know of your nutrient deficiencies and nutrient imbalances. If you don't know them, get tested and then set up a diet that includes foods and supplements that aim to overcome these nutrient deficiencies. Don't just eat something because everyone tells you to eat it. 